guys how's it going it's a height here and we're back with a brand new episode of oxygen not included and guys i am so excited to be here with you today because i fixed most of the problems in my base and most of them were caused by as some of you already pointed out a vacuum in my base i was not producing enough oxygen this whole space was a vacuum and I was basically spreading chlorine around my whole base. But not very much chlorine, just a very small amount. But it looked pretty bad. Anyway, I fixed the problem by making this new oxygen room. Check it out, guys. So we've got this new oxygen room. I'm not sure this is going to be the final layout, but it's a lot better than where we were at before. So anyway, I got all these guys down here. I've got airlocks. I used crude oil airlocks just because I was close to this biome here and I didn't want... Oh, I might need cooling in here. Hmm, I might need cooling in here. Not a problem right now. That's a future problem. Anyway. I, I used oil because we were close to this cold biome and I didn't want it to freeze. So anyway, this is a completely locked room now. The hydrogen's not going to escape. The oxygen is not going to escape. And all I'm doing here is pumping hydrogen 100% of the time to burn it off and get rid of it. And then I've got a little filter system set up here so that if it does suck up oxygen, it doesn't wreck my hydrogen generators and it just pumps it down and out of the way so there's probably a way i could automate this a little bit better using uh atmo sensors once the pressure builds up enough and it's sensing hydrogen then then kick in i don't know we can worry about that later i just you know, small steps at a time. This is a huge increase, uh, a huge upgrade from where we were at. Then all of these pipes here, these things can apparently pump 500 grams per second, but these ducts can hold 1,000. So what I've done, not sure if this is good or not, is I've linked up two, two vents per duct. And then we've got these ducts going up, going through my going to be new water reservoir to cool off. Because right now we are cooling this place. Uh, as you can see here, this water is pretty temperate. I mean, it gets colder the farther down you go because it's in an ice biome now. So there is that. And we don't have power down here. What did I do? I probably demolished something I shouldn't have. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, let's turn this switch on really quick. That should prime everything. Oh, you know what happened? I disconnected my hydrogen generators. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot about that. I am in the middle of dismantling this room. So we're not going to need any of these tanks anymore. And I guess what I'm going to have to do is turn this bad boy around. We're going to deconstruct it and we're going to turn it around. We're going to now start pumping power into that wire instead of out of it. So, let's do that. I've got so much stuff to show you guys. I've been busy since the last episode, and I have big plans. So, as soon as this gets out of the way, we'll plunk her down, and I'll run you through all the other stuff I've changed. Oh, I'm excited! So, I do have plans to make a power... Like a power bay... And have all my carbon dioxide producing stuff in 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 uh, locked air locked chamber, much like this. I think that will be a good idea, but I haven't got to that point yet. We've got a few new volcanoes, guys. This one is a gold volcano. It spits out gold at 9.6 kilograms per second at 2,600 degrees C. So. Right now, it's just dropping it into this water. 
and it hasn't caused me too many issues just because it's in the middle of this like cold biome and stuff like that but i'm expecting once the water evaporates that that's going to be a problem anyway for now it hasn't been an issue this guy over here is actually producing brine and it's producing brine at a freezing rate so i'd like to tap into that at some point probably not today but some point and then up here this guy is producing iron and uh where are we at 14 kilograms per second again ridiculously hot i've just got this room sealed off right now i didn't want to i didn't want to deal with that especially because it's outside of my base in the like no go zone right now so it's just chilling it's just chilling but yeah so anyway here we are i've moved the bathrooms if you'll remember my bathrooms used to be up over i don't quite remember i think they were right in here actually so i moved the bathrooms i've deleted the medical bay i don't actually have a medical bay anymore and i made this huge bedroom wing we've also added in a bunch of sculptures check it out i i haven't been doing anything with decor yet but i mean these rooms are actually okay this uh this needs some work obviously it's not the best and I mean, no one's going in here really ever, so that part's not so bad. But yeah, we've got a little bit of work to do. But yeah, so there's that. My, my bathrooms, this cooling system, it is officially working now. This room has cooled down to, well, minus 26 degrees C. I added a couple extra thermal regulators and I'm still cooling carbon dioxide right now. I know you guys said to make a closed loop system and use hydrogen because it has better thermal transfer and then it, it's not going to be such a waste of power. But for now, I'm going to leave it. I know I need to upgrade it at some point. I will get to it. I, I have so many things I want to upgrade, guys. There's like so many inefficiencies in my base right now. It's disgusting. So I really want to get some of this stuff sorted out and fixed. And just some of the stuff's got to get cleaned up. I mean, look at the pipes. The pipes, well, okay, besides the cooling loop, I've got water being plumbed all over the place that's being used for stuff. And what I want to do today, I think, is when I was moving these things over here, I noticed something interesting about all of these water items. And let's see, the shower uses one gram per second, uh, one kilogram per second, but it produces one kilogram per second, which is good. Then where are we at? The sink uses five kilograms per use but produces five kilograms per use which is good but when we get to the toilet the toilet uses five kilograms per use but produces 11.7 kilograms per use so this bathroom if we were to try and make it a closed loop system actually makes water it makes water so i what i want to do i think in today's episode in in an attempt to get rid of this lagoon which we don't really need anymore because i've got this one over here that's got all the water in it now so in an attempt to get rid of this and honestly most of this i don't think we need our room this big anymore um i can also get rid of this by just using only clean water to start it and then as long as there's no salt water that sneaks into there we don't even need a desalinator in this space i have gone ahead and deleted or emptied this tank so it is now empty we can deconstruct that bad boy and we can deconstruct all of these pipes. Now, what I want to do is set up a new spot that's going to be completely, I hope, self-sufficient in regards to the water. 
So what's gonna happen is we're actually producing water. So I have to use the excess water somewhere. And I'm thinking, I know there's a plant that you guys were saying I should stop using because it uses up so much water. But when I'm trying to get rid of water, it seems like a good idea. So where am I at here? Uh, actually, I should probably put down a... Yeah, uh, let's just plunk one of these bad boys down and let's take a look at the plants in it. I, I know there's at least one that uses water. All right, here we are. So this thing's probably not going to stay here, but I just did this for checking stuff out. Now, I believe something in here uses water. Mealwood actually uses dirt, which we're going to need because this produces clean water from polluted water using sand produces polluted dirt so then we're gonna have to put the polluted dirt into this reduces polluted dirt down to dirt and then this makes 100 kilograms per second of dirt i wonder i don't think this can be fully automated but at least i can have an automated machine moving items around I think that's the best we're going to be able to do because... Uh, I think this still has to be worked by a duplicant. I think. Anyway, let's take a look here. This takes dirt. What does this one take? Um, water. Kilogram... 20 kilograms per cycle. Okay, so that's good. Honestly, I think the best one to just get rid of water is the thimble reed because it uses polluted water but doesn't take anything else. So I think that is probably the best way to go. And we're also going to need some of these because they only use dirt and nothing else. So we can take the dirt that we get out of here and instantly put it into our mealwood seeds I think that's gonna work yeah I think that's gonna work so the first thing we need to do is make a new chlorine room this one I think is way too big I think we're gonna make do with two this time and I believe there was something in here a germ sensor now, I'm not sure if there's one of those four pipes. Liquid pipe germ sensor sends a green signal or a red signal based on the internal germ count of the pipe. So we'll be able to put the polluted, the, the not the polluted, well, yeah, the polluted. We'll be able to put the polluted water full of bacteria into one and then use a liquid pipe germ sensor to tell it when it's allowed to transfer into the next one which is going to just store the clean the clean water or i guess i should say antibacterial water because it's not going to be clean yet to send up and onwards into the rest of our process so i think what I want to do is make a little room, probably like this, too. Uh, hang on. Let me get some reservoirs. We're going to have one that's input. We're going to need a little bit of room for our plumbing. Uh, germ sensor. And then we're going to need a liquid shutoff. I'm not sure exactly how this works again. Every time I get involved with these things, it's uh, a little bit awkward until I rejigger how it's going to work. But if we do something like this, so we're going to want to go through a liquid germ sensor. Through a valve. And then into the clean water supply. I hope. 
that should work. I think. So now what we're going to do is seal this room off. I'm going to need a little bit of room to work. Because uh, I'm going to have to put a vacuum in here. Uh, oh, crap. Yeah, we're going to need a vacuum, aren't we? Because I got to fill this room up with chlorine. Okay. Not a problem. I'll seal this off. And I guess the vacuum can go over here somewhere for now. All right, so we've got the vacuum set up or started anyway. The, the airlock is here. I've got this working kind of sort of. So I think what we have to do now is replumb the output from here into here, which shouldn't be that. I'm going to get water everywhere. Um, hang on. If I deconstruct this bridge, I think that will work, right? Deconstruct. Does that not work? There we go. Oh, we can't actually. You know, instead of using this pitcher pump, I could have just literally dumped water out of this pipe into there. But, meh, it's working for now. We'll let it ride. So I'm going to just wait for hopefully this pipe to empty up and then we can delete it. We can reroute this pipe into there we're gonna have to reroute all of these oh i can actually do that right now now i think this is how we want it to work i'm not a hundred percent sure about all this signal below current ambient germs green signal if below two if below one <laughs> If below one, it'll turn on and then it should allow water to pass through. This might not be... This might not be the best way to do this. But we'll see how it works. If it doesn't work that well, I've got enough room here. I can put one more... We can put one more reservoir if we have to i'm hoping we don't have to but we'll see how it works okay so the vacuum is done as you can see here we've got a completely sealed off vacuum so we're going to go and we're going to stick a vent in here uh it doesn't really matter where let's just stick it up here we can deconstruct this and we can also deconstruct this stuff. Then all we gotta do is... Yeah, we're making a mess. All my toilets are off right now, so it's not the nicest for my poor little guys. We're working on it. We've got water. It's coming in now, so... Now this should turn off... Storing zero. Contents polluted water. So this should stay. I don't know if the system is going to work the way I want it to. <laughs> but we're going to try. If it doesn't work, like I said, we can add one more of these loops. And then I think that should fix it. Maybe. Anyway, whatever. It is what it is. We're going to fill this room up with chlorine. We're going to see how this works. That should be... Here it comes. It's coming in now. So now if there's any germs, which there will be, it's kind of hard to... It's kind of hard to know. But... 
it should start to kill them and then once they're dead it should allow it to go into there hopefully in an ideal world we'll see how this happens maybe it doesn't happen salt water sure why not so it might take a while for this to work the first time just because there's so many germs but once this gets kind of diluted hopefully we're able to keep up with the amount of germs hopefully i don't know exactly but that's the plan anyway so now once that's done you know we've got dirty water in there once that's done, what's going to happen is that water is going to come through. We don't need, actually, we don't need any of this stuff anymore. Let's get rid of all of this. All right, guys. So I've done a little bit of reworking here. I made a loop now. There's a little bit of a loop in here that checks if the bacteria is zero. If it is, it comes up through the valve and should come into this tank. And if it's not, it'll bypass it and go up and it'll recirculate in an attempt to not have this plug up. It seemed like the bacteria, if it was in the pipe right behind this thing, wasn't being exposed to chlorine for whatever reason. So I've just tried to fix that issue by making a loop. Now, what's going to happen is because I've got this bridge here, it should pull the water down if it can. And I have that. This has priority over this. So it won't recirculate if there's fresh water to come in. Which I think is good. Oh, although it might get all bunged up when this gets full. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to have to just see. We're going to have to hope for the best. But anyway, so this gets priority. If there's water coming down and there's room in here, it will come down. If there's not room, I want it to go right by and I want it to get dumped into a plant of some description. So I guess what we're gonna do next is plumbing. Is it plumbing? Stations? What the heck? I forget. I forget what we're trying to do here water sieve okay so we want to come through there into a water sieve because that's going to purify the water for us which is good so we're going to come right across in here up into there and then from that point we should just have clean water so I'm wondering if I should put a little storage just to always have a little bit of a bigger buffer of clean water. I don't think it's the end of the world to do that. If we do something like this, then we should just always have a little bit of clean water for ourselves. I think that's maybe a good idea. Now, as far as these ducts, we were just using them to get chlorine in here. We don't need them anymore. I don't need any of this. I don't need any of that. All of this stuff can get trashed. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got the clean water without the bacteria coming through here, which is perfect. Zero, so it's going up and getting stored. Look at that. We are now storing some clean, well, I shouldn't say clean, some decontaminated water. That decontaminated water is going through here through our little sieve, and it is getting stored in here as nice, clean, pure water amazing okay so now what we're gonna have to deal with is the polluted dirt that's coming out of here um and i think before we do that is there bacteria in here or is this all it shouldn't have bacteria no so we can actually get rid of this room um but all of that water see i'm looking here i want to move this floor up one but I don't really want to get rid of all this water. We're still kind of using it and it's clean. 
So I think the first thing we have to do is get the chlorine out of there. Let me deconstruct this. We're gonna have to do something with that chlorine. So let's just get some storage going for now. Just temporary. I hope that's enough. Just temporary. We'll get the chlorine out of there. Then we'll figure out what we want to do with it. We might just dump it. We'll see. Okay, so now I've got all of the, well, most of the gas. Why is this not working? Let's enable that. I've got most of the gas out of there. It's, it's coming down. We filled up almost two of these tanks. So that's looking pretty good. But what I want to do now is have somewhere for the extra water to go when we don't need it. So I'm thinking what's going to happen is that water is going to... Why is this still here? Deconstruct. I just wanted to fill this up with clean water just to make sure that it's full. Now that that's full though, we shouldn't need... Actually, we shouldn't need any of those lines because... I believe this system should just work. I'm hoping it will. So now we can delete all of this. Connect this right into there. And our loop should be mostly working. In fact, it should just work now until we've made enough water that this thing is full and we still need more room. Then we're going to have a problem. But that's fine. That's what we're working on right now. So from this point, we're going to pick up the dirt. I'm going to use this thing. We're going to put it into probably a conveyor loader. I think so that we can ship it out to get. Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll take it and we'll ship it out so that it can go down here and get composted. That should be good. Yeah, I think that will be fine. So from here, we're going to want a conveyor rail. And we're actually just going to come right down and dump it. I guess it doesn't really matter where. We'll just dump it in here somewhere. And then we're going to need another auto sweeper because I'm going to want to start automatically converting that stuff. Why is this not working? There we go. Automatically converting that stuff into compost or at least putting it in there to get converted to compost so that should work fine now what we're gonna need is some of those hydroponics farms some of these bad boys and I don't know how many we're gonna want maybe one how much hang on let's let's just put in three I think that's going to be more than we need. We're not making that much extra water. And these things, I I think off the top of my head, I don't remember, but I think it was like 150 kilograms of water per plant. Which is basically 10 toilet flushes. No, more. We're only making six extra. So I, I think one of these is way more than enough, but we'll have three just in case. Now what I'm gonna wanna do is take all of the water that's coming in here and send it over to this drain. So I've already got a line partially, something like that. And then we're just gonna wanna take this water and this water. So we'll take both of them. So actually, we can disconnect that chute because we don't want any more water coming in there. We'll take both of these pipes, connect them together, and temporarily we'll liquid bridge over because this is where that other one's going to come through for now. And then we'll come down here 
and we'll connect into there. This guy is gonna come under down here and into there. Okay, so that should start sending all of our water. At least all of our unfiltered water. We still have a few reservoirs here. And I don't want to turn them off just yet because we are using them for oxygen and stuff. I'm going to have to get a new... I'm going to have to get a new thing set up for actual oxygen. But this shouldn't have any back... Oh, it does. Oh, this is going to as well, isn't it? <gasps> I didn't think this through. Oh, no. Hang on, cancel. I think what we're going to want to do then... Ay, caramba. I didn't think this all the way through. I need all of this water to get treated, at least for bacteria. I don't need anything else, but I do need it to not have bacteria in it. Although, I don't know if it matters if there's bacteria in, in the water that goes into these things. It might not matter. Water goes in one end. Life-sustaining oxygen comes out the other. I wonder what happens if you put bacteria riddled. Does it produce polluted oxygen? Because that would be bad. Ooh, that would be bad. I wonder. I kind of want to test it, but I'm not sure the easiest way to do that. You'd think because it's a heating the water up that it would just kill the bacteria off. But I don't want to make that assumption and then be very, very wrong later. So what I think we might end up doing, if that's going to be a huge pain in the butt, is I might have to make another chlorine room just temporarily. Something like this, but not here. We've already got the chlorine stored up, so that's not too big of an issue. And then we can filter all of this and kill all the bacteria. I don't know if there's, is there like an antibacteria machine that would just do it for me and take a whole bunch of power? I don't really care at this point, but that would be hella nice. Liquid tepidizer. I mean, that would probably work, but I don't know if I really want to heat all that water up. If you know what I'm saying. It's maybe not the best. Although... Yeah, hmm. I don't know what we're going to do with it yet. I'll figure something out. Maybe we'll just... Maybe like I was saying, maybe we'll just make another chlorine room real quick. A small little one. And basically do what we're doing with this. Wait till it's treated and as soon as it is, send it on its way. I would like to just use this facility, but now that it's kind of a closed loop system, I don't really want to mess with it by adding extra water. But I guess, I mean, we could. Also, I guess what we could do with this water is just plumb it and just get rid of it. Although, we probably end up with... I don't know. I don't know what happens when you use bacteria water for stuff. I'm assuming it's not good. Also, as far as water for our oxygen production, I think what I'm going to do is tap into this thing. We'll desalinate it. And then I'll just put the water that we get out of here straight into there. And then we can just use... I mean, that seems like a pretty good idea to me. Then I don't have to really worry about where I'm going to get the clean water from. Okay. Okay. I don't know, guys. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. I don't know if that's a bad idea. How much does this make? 3,732 grams per second. I just don't know if it's going to produce enough water. We might want to store it somewhere. We could have reservoirs. It's maybe not the end of the world. 
I would like to have a backup water supply just to make sure we always have oxygen. Hmm. Yeah, we might want to try and find some more water somewhere. Just because that's how we're making oxygen right now. We don't want to run out. What's going on up here? What have you idiots done? Okay, we'll sweep that up. Anyway, guys, I think we came here and we did what we wanted to today. We, I, I mean, I showed you my new base layout. It's quite a bit better. We still have so many things that I want to update and... I've got a lot of automation and closed loop systems that I want to start setting up. Just one thing at a time. I This was really starting to bug me, this whole area, just being in the middle of my base and taking up space. So hopefully we can get rid of it soon. And then actually this whole room we can get rid of as well. I can deconstruct all this now. We've moved the oxygen out of here. Yeah, this whole room can go. And then that should start bringing the temperature down. That spot was super hot there for a while, so it's starting to come down. This... I don't have insulated panels around that thing. Wow. Okay, I completely forgot about that. Let's insulate that. I also want to automate stuff like this, because these two things are going to draw a lot of power. So I could set up an automated system that only kicks on when the pressure in this room is at a certain point, so that I'm not wasting power all the time until there's a vacuum, essentially. So I think that's probably a good idea. I could do the same thing up in here. What's happening is these guys are pumping up and into this room with this high pressure vent. And then these guys are pumping out. I'm having a bunch here in storage. And also the excess goes right through. Let me see if I can show you. So here it draws into there if it can. And if it can't. Or actually it goes this way first. And if it, and if it's full, then it'll take the excess and store it. And then it doesn't draw out of here until this line is empty. So we're always going to have some natural gas built up as a little bit of a buffer, which is nice. And I have, man, I have so much work to do down here. Yeah, oh, it's gonna be crazy. I also wanna set up some kind of system. Um, I wanna make a shaft down here for all the carbon dioxide to fall down and then have a little system down there that's a closed loop because I believe, I believe these things use the same amount of water that they create polluted water yeah so i can make a little closed loop system and just put one of these sieves in there and then i'm gonna have to ship sand down there which is kind of a pain but at least then the water we don't have to ship water down there i'm not gonna have to run piping all the way down to the bottom of the world so I think that's probably a good idea. Soon, what I want to do is have the hydrogen here. It's just always going to run, I think. I just want to get rid of it. So the hydrogen's always going to run. I might set up a storage just to have some extra kicking around for when we need it. But I'm not going to actually store it for power purposes. And then I want to have coal. I want to have natural gas. I want to use petroleum. And then I just want to have a bunch of smart batteries set up so that they know when to kick in and when to kick off. And I won't use petroleum unless I need to, and I won't use coal unless I need to. Um, so we can have a big smart, a smart power production facility, however you want to word it. A big, big tower of power here. The tower of power. <laughs> but yeah. So anyways, guys, I am going to try and figure out what I'm going to do with this water. I do want it out of here. I'm just not sure if I can treat it before I haul it out or not. I'm hoping I can. But, um, yeah. Look at this. We're starting to build up a little buffer here. Feels pretty good. Okay, guys. Anyway, I don't know why this is taking so long waiting for gold amalgam. We have some. I'm just... I guess my guys are doing other things. More important things. But yeah. So guys, 
that's our latest and greatest. I have so much work to do, but let me know in the comments how you're liking the series so far. And oh no, I just realized. Uh, I just realized I started pumping a whole bunch of oxygen. Oh no. Insulating that thing was maybe not a good idea right now. Now I'm gonna have oxygen in here and it's gonna get into all my stuff. But whatever. It's already done. The damage is done. I may as well let them finish. We'll let them finish. It is what it is. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here. And I'll see you next time.